There's a lot of men out there doing damage to women. A lot of men playing games, a lot of men just creating all kinds of confusion and frustration among women. And I know it's very easy for a woman to start to think this is all men. It's not. But it's easy to feel that way. And I understand why, because it's not only what you may have gone through, but friends and family, all the stories that you're hearing. Now, let me make something clear. There are tons of great men out there and you can't let those experiences blind you from that reality because now you'll start to miss out on the better that exists. But you also have to understand how you have to navigate through the bad ones. Because I always say, if you can't get past the wrong ones, you won't get to the right one, all right? And that's part of what I do, is to help you learn what to look for, how to address it, things of that nature, and understand why you may be caught in this cycle of always getting played by a man. So here's the first type of woman, no particular order, that's always getting played. The woman who focuses on potential and not reality. So here's the thing, okay? I know it's, it's very natural for a woman to see something in a man and see something that she believes in and believes that if it's poured into properly, it can grow into something amazing. That's part of your nurturing spirit. That's part of your desire to grow with someone. That, that's part of your desire to, to just basically share a life with an individual, right? But the problem is that that optimistic view gets a lot of women in trouble. Now, here's the thing. It's not that I want you to simply not consider potential at all, but we have to understand how we, how we frame potential and how we use reality to really guide us in what we're doing and how we perceive this man that's in front of you, okay? So let me give you an example. So if you meet a man and let's say he's He's broke. <laughs> Let's go find something else. But he's broke, all right? The man is broke. Currently, he is out of work. You meet him. He's like a great guy. He is a great guy. Let's just say he is a great guy, all right? Treats you nice, talks to you nice, all that good stuff. And you see something in him because you believe he can be so much more than what he is. And so now, because of that potential, you believe, all right, you know, you can grow with a man. Some of y'all might be trying to build a man, which you shouldn't do. We'll leave, we'll leave that alone for a second. All right. And you just think, all right, if I just support him and I encourage him because I love him, everything can work out great. The problem is if his mindset, if his own desire it does not exist to where he wants to be better, you're fighting a battle you can't win. All right. If he doesn't see the potential himself and, and, and want to put in the work, you are fighting a battle you cannot win. Essentially, this man has to have a foundation that says, I am growing to be something better. So what I'm saying here is, yes, I, I'm not necessarily 100% against a woman dating a guy in that situation. Though I do think it is best to wait till he establishes his own foundation first and creates his own stability. And I know there's a lot of people who will point to stories of women who, you know, got with the man when he was down and now they're living happily ever after. And I'm not saying these situations don't exist. What I will say is they are the minority. And for every successful situation, I can show you a thousand more disasters. So you have to be careful with using those minority situations and projecting that into what, how this could be you too. And it's not that it couldn't, but you're taking a huge risk. All right. But to get back to the foundational piece that he needs to have, you, the reality that you have to focus on with this man is what is his character? What is his work ethic? Who is he as a man? You see, there's a difference between the man who's a hard worker, believes in, in, in carrying his own, providing in other ways for you, right? But is at the moment going through a rough patch. That's a guy that you can make an exception for if you desire to do that. However, where women are getting played is because they're not realizing this is just a lazy ass bum. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> it just came out that way. He is not about doing anything. He is wired to only do what is required to get what he desires. Meaning now, if you are in his life as a woman, pouring into him, being his girl, his wife, whatever, to him it's like, why do I have to work hard now? She's already here. I already have what I want. The incentive to be better has been removed because not every man is motivated by his own ambitions. Not every man wants to be something bigger and better in life. All right. And that's another aspect of it, because sometimes it's, it's not even that he's broke. It's not even that he's a lazy bum. He might be a good, hardworking man. Right. And let's just say to put this in, in more context, let's say he worked at a factory and he's making 60 grand a year. And to him, he's good. He's happy. But you know, in your mind, you're like, now, you know, I'm gonna use a different example. Let's say he's a plumber, right? And he's making 60 grand a year and he's happy with it. But to you, it's like, no, but he could one day have his own plumbing company. And now you get with him with the potential, with the belief that he can reach this potential of being a boss when he's not wired that way. He does not want that. And now you guys conflict and clash because you were focused more on potential, not reality. You have to accept the man for who he is right now. And you have to ask yourself, can I be happy with what's in front of me right now? Because again, it's not that I'm saying you can't have hopes for more to come with him. What I am saying is, you don't get romantically involved until he starts realizing those hopes, until he starts walking in that path that you can find yourself at peace in. Because if, again, going back to the plumber making 60, if that level of income and work is something you're not going to be happy with and you're only going to try to suck it up because you think he could be better and you're just waiting for that next level for him to reach, then it would be a mistake to move forward. And this is how women get played because again, they move forward too fast and they think that support and encouragement has to also come in the form of being his girlfriend. Like, yo, if you really believe in this man and you think he can go far, great, be his friend. Because once you cross the lines of romantic involvement, this is where things get messy. This is where your feelings can get hurt. This is where your time can get wasted. This is where you can get played. And it's very easy. I'm going to end it with this before we move on to the next point. Because of this desire to seek out potential and pour into it, it becomes very easy for a woman to fall into the hands of a narcissist. If it's very easy to fall into the hands of a man who's simply looking to use you as a come up, all right? Because you're not understanding the fact that he is not capable at the moment of pouring into you the way that you need and sustaining that. You're more hanging on the fact that I can give him what he needs and there's a level of emotional security you think you can find in that, but it's not secure. It doesn't give you peace and over time it will drain you and damage you and put you back in that cycle of a woman who continues to get played. All right, so let's move things along. The second type of woman who's always getting played is the woman who thinks sex can bring her love. So I think most should know by now, but there's still plenty who may not fully understand that sex and love, not the same thing. All right. You have to separate these two things, especially when it comes to men. And I think there's a quote that says men use love to get sex and women use sex to get love. And it's unhealthy on both sides. All right. It, it, it's, it's a dynamic that creates more problems. And as a woman, you have to be careful with thinking that sleeping with this man is what's going to get you to the finish line. All right. I know there's a lot of women who may feel the pressure of having to be intimate. Now, let me make something clear. I'm I'm all in support of abstinence. You know, I think from a spiritual perspective, waiting till marriage is best. But I always talk about the fact that I understand many of us and I say us because I'm guilty as anybody else. <laughs> many of us will struggle, have struggled with waiting till marriage. All right. And many of us cross that line before marriage comes. But what's, what's 
If you're going to walk that path, not saying you should, but if you're going to walk that path, then you've got to understand why you're doing it and how it, how you need to go about it in the sense that, again, if you're going to choose to lay down with this man because you want to do it, that is your choice as a grown woman. If you feel like you want to enjoy that experience with him, that is your choice as a grown woman. But the minute you start thinking that this will gain you favor in his eyes, that this will get him hooked, all these different things, this is where you're crossing a bad line. Now, let me be honest with you. Can the sex hook a man? To a certain degree, yes. Yes. But not in the way that is truly beneficial for you in the long run. This is the thing. It's not that it cannot get a man to become attached to you because sex does bond people in a lot of ways, attach people in a lot of ways, creates unhealthy attachments. And yes, if the sex is great, it's very easy for now a man to want to hold on to you. But here's the problem. If he's not serious about being with you, if he doesn't see you as his future, the sex doesn't really change that. He may. He may, in a moment of stupidity, <laughs> and I say this because it's just what it is, right? In a moment of stupidity being clouded by the sex, he may try to convince himself that, man, maybe I should make her my girl. Maybe she could be the one because this is so good, right? And, and ignoring the other red flags that exist in this relationship. But he will not be able to sustain being a man that you need because now his motivation is really... Uh, driven by what he's getting from you in this area. It's not being driven by what he's willing to pour into you. And a relationship cannot last and be successful and healthy and happy without two people being willing to pour into each other's needs and desires. So do not mistake the man getting hooked or situations where you see women who, yes, seem to win the man's attention with Getting an actual happy, healthy relationship. His attention doesn't mean you have his respect. His attention doesn't mean he values you. His attention does not mean he's best for you. So you've got to be careful with that. And I always say, again, if you're going to cross the lines with intimacy, then you want to be sure that if things don't work out with you guys, you will not feel some kind of way about giving yourself to him physically. That's the thing. If you're going to be able to, if this thing blows up tomorrow, I mean, let's say you sleep with him tonight, tomorrow it blows up, he falls off, whatever. D not saying it's ever going to be cool or good or you're going to be happy with it. But if you're not going to say, man, like, feel like you got cheated because you laid down with him, then okay. But if that's going to be a level of hurt for you, because it, to you it's a huge sacrifice, it's a huge thing for you, to, a huge step for you to take, then you shouldn't take that step until you reach that point of comfort. Now, of course, we all know that any relationship can end at any time. It can end during the dating. It can end in boyfriend and girlfriend. It can end in marriage. But you want to get to a place with a piece of this aspect of crossing lines with him intimately. So do not think sex can bring you love. And the women who do, this is where they get themselves hurt a lot. And I have to say this. You know, I have one of those hit in my spirit moments. I want you to understand, and I say this, everything I'm saying in this video, y'all know, I say it with love. I don't say it to hurt y'all. I don't say it to make you feel some kind of way. I say it to wake you up, to give you more awareness, right? Here's, excuse me, here's the reality of using sex as a weapon and, and having sex sooner than maybe you should for what, where you're truly comfortable with it, right? You have to understand, though you may think this sex will get him hooked, the sex could actually push him away. Because I think what, and again, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but I have to be real. I think a lot of women have this mindset of, they're just, like, I've never heard a woman say she's not good in bed. <laughs> Every woman believes she's awesome in bed. And so they don't realize that, yes, you may have been awesome for the other guy you were with, but with this guy, there may be a lot of things lacking, all right? And the reality is that you moving faster than you were truly comfortable with can lead to uh, a lack in performance, can lead to a disconnect in the bedroom, can lead to things that he's actually going to now judge you on. So 
The idea that using intimacy is a great way to draw in a man is very misguided because you're not even, you don't even know if you can give him that quality because maybe you guys haven't spent enough time even trying to get to know each other sexually. We need to have more conversations beforehand before we cross that line when we're trying to establish healthy, long-lasting relationships. But I want you to be aware of that because I... You know, there's a lot of women who say, well, you know, it, it, the man, you, you sleep with him and then he goes. He's gone. And the assumption is always, oh, he just left because he finally got what he wanted. But the reality sometimes is it, it wasn't connecting like that. I'm trying to find nice words to use right now, all right? It wasn't, it, the vibe wasn't right in the bedroom. And he, he it, it was used against you, essentially. And that's why you don't want to lean on that as a way to get a man. And when women do, it is a sure way to end up getting played. All right, so now we're on number three. And the third type of woman who gets played is the woman who listens to his words and overlooks his actions. So I need to really clear this up because there's a lot of confusion behind the Actions speak louder to, than words. And I've even said in my videos before, if a man, you got to take the man for what he says to you. There's a lot of confusion here. So to make this very clear, the words and the actions have to line up together. It's really not about one or the other. It's about both. All right. Because essentially, if a man says, I love you, but his actions don't show you that we have a problem. If the man acts like he, he does actions, and, and let me say something. The thing with actions is it's an interpretable thing sometimes. So quick example, let's say a man buys you a gift for Valentine's Day and you and your girl's like, oh my gosh, that's so sweet. He loves you, right? <laughs> and in reality, no, it's, he doesn't love you. He just thought this was the right thing to do for Valentine's Day or he just wanted to make sure he would shut you up for Valentine's Day or yeah, maybe he wanted to put a smile on your face. But he's not loving you like that, like he wants to be serious with you, okay? So I say that to say that a lot of times people look at actions and still get it wrong. Because my thing is this, is he giving you the words and the actions? It has to be both. It has to be both. But going back to the original line of listening to his words and overlooking his actions, I want to start there or focus there for a second because, again, a lot of women... I even honestly saw a post pop up. I can't remember the page. And it was a woman kind of having her vulnerable moment of and saying that she came to the realization that you have to pay attention to what the man is doing, not just what he's saying. Because it's so easy for women in wanting to believe this relationship is what it could be or he's feeling the way that she wants him to feel or whatever the case may be. For her to buy into the words, buy into all the sweet nothings he's whispering in her ear because it feels good. It sounds nice, all right? And emotionally, it hits you in those soft places. But when you, when you take all that in and you overlook the fact that he continues to mistreat you, he continues to be inconsistent, he continues to show you something contrary to what he said to you, this is a problem. Now... I want to also make clear that you have to discuss with him what you're looking for in those actions to back up those words. And I say that because, again, we cannot simply assume that the man knows better already. All right. Because knowing better isn't just a general thing about, well, this is how relationships could be had because everyone does relationships different. Not everyone, but uh, there's different details to different relationships. Okay. And what you want and what you're looking for may be very different from what the other woman wanted and was looking for. And so to him, he may honestly feel like he's putting forth an effort that backs up his words. But because you're looking for something specific and he's not providing that, you discredit everything he's doing. To, him, to you, it's, oh, no, he, he's not serious. He's playing games. And what would clear that up is a conversation. A conversation that said, this is what I'm looking for. And, and I know there's a lot of people who hear this advice of don't tell a man what you're looking for because then it makes it easier for him to play you. I disagree. It's, it's not that it technically could not make it easier for a player to play you. However, the average man, I always say the average man who or the typical man who is just trying to play games 
is trying to do the least amount of work for the most amount of return, okay? So even if you lay out for him everything that you're looking for, he's not likely to check off every box. Are there some exceptions to the rule? Yes, but there's other ways to expose that guy even when he does that. However, in, that, in the vast majority of the cases, he's not checking off all the boxes. But the guy who's serious about you will make an effort to check all the boxes that you guys discussed. You have to give him a fair shot to show you he's for real. And you, he can't do that if he doesn't understand what you need poured into you. So be willing to have that discussion. But yes, it's not just his words, it's his actions together. That is the key. Together is what matters. And, and, and when you hear people say actions speak louder than words, it, it, I would simply say, look at it from the perspective of the action is like the exclamation point after the statement. It's like, okay, I love you. And now my action really drives that home. So it speaks louder in the sense that it has the greater or it should have the greater impact but in itself cannot stand alone because without the words to back it up, we still have an issue. And real quick, I'll say this, because sometimes you have a man who is very loving, but doesn't know how to express it, all right? Then, then we need to go to counseling for that. Then we need to dive deeper into addressing this issue because it's going to be very hard for you. Let's be real, you want to hear it too. You just don't want to feel it. You want to hear it. And also because, again, you don't want to get caught in situations where, like I always talk about, some guys will act like your boyfriend, but they're not trying to be your boyfriend. And so you don't want to get mixed up in that and, again, end up getting played. All right. So before I move on to the next type of woman, real quick, people are, or women are always asking me about coaching services, wanting to get their questions answered, needing more insight and advice. And I have the perfect thing for you. Join my special coaching program today where you're going to be able to learn how to heal, meeting relationship-minded men, finding purpose, hearing God more clearly, tapping into your feminine energy. So many things. We also get to meet two times a month. I'm going to be able to answer your questions. You're going to be able to join a group of like-minded women who are all working to make their life better overall. All right? Take advantage, join the program today, go to receivingmyblessings.com or click the link in the description or in the comment section. All right, so let's keep this thing going. The next type of woman who continues to get played is the woman who overlooks the red flags or ignores the red flags or rationalizes past the red flags, all right? So let's keep it real. I always say women don't really miss anything. Women see every little detail. Like if a man sneezes different tomorrow, y'all gonna catch it. <laughs> like you guys just, you guys are so aware. It's crazy. This is why women are such amazing detectives because y'all can find anything if you want. The problem is rarely about the woman not seeing it. It's the woman not accepting it. The woman rationalizing past it. Those red flags being there and you sweeping it under the rug and saying, nah, it's not a big deal. Nah, I, or not wanting to address it because you don't want to face the reality that addressing it would lead to the end of this situation, the end of the relationship. But this is exactly what sets women up to get played. N now, again, if you watch my previous videos and you know, I always say seeing a red flag doesn't mean you run immediately. It doesn't mean you just cut them off because the red flag exists. No, you address it. You talk about it. And then if it cannot be corrected, then yes, you move on. And you want to do this as quickly as possible. It's very easy for us as human beings, men and women, to be enjoying the initial hype, the initial euphoria of meeting someone and clicking with them in, in, in various ways, whatever the case may be, maybe high level of attraction, and because we don't want to let go of that, we don't want to face the red flag that exists. But because we kick that can down the road, we create a dynamic where now we become more attached to this individual. It becomes more difficult to address things. And then even when you address it and it's not corrected, you may have a harder time walking away. So the sooner you can do it, 
the better. And the, the more you will increase your chances of avoiding getting played or getting caught up in unhealthy negative cycles. So be honest with yourself about why you don't want to face it and, and, and address whatever deeper issue that is as well. Because sometimes it could be that fear of, again, walking away from the situation, fear of being alone. Uh, maybe you introduce them to family and now you don't want to feel embarrassed having to face the family and saying it didn't work out. Whatever it is, I'm just throwing out various examples, but there's tons more that we can come up with. The point is be real with yourself, address that core issue, that root issue, but then still get to the bottom of the red flag and see if this is correctable or not. All right, so now here's another type of woman who's always getting played, and it's the woman who hasn't healed from her past. If, if there's anything that increases the chances of an unhealthy relationship, being with the wrong person, uh, being blind to red flags and, and so on and so forth, you know, uh, uh, going about things in, in ways that we shouldn't, it's a lack of healing, plain and simple. And when you ignore the deeper rooted issues that you are holding on to, you are setting yourself up for more problems, all right? Now, I wanna make clear, healing isn't just about the last relationship you were in. The key is healing from everything you've been hurt from. Healing from childhood trauma, whether it's from parents, friends, siblings, yes, past lovers as well. It may be three lovers ago that, they're, that the real cycle started, all right, that the hurt started, and because it wasn't healed immediately, it now turned into more bad relationships that piled on more damage, all right? So it's important that you stop yourself. Now, there are people out there who want to push this idea that, oh, well, you know, we all have issues and you're never really fully healed, so you don't need to be healed before you get into a relationship. Honestly, that's horrible advice. I'm just going to keep it real with y'all because the problem is, one, let me make clear, you can heal from all that. There are plenty of people who are walking this earth right now who took the time to heal fully from their past and accomplished it. Yes, there will always be new opportunities for hurt, but here's the thing. When you heal from that past trauma, you become stronger in how you're able to handle new issues. Also, when you understand that hurt is inevitable and you take it more to learn, you take maybe that rejection as God's redirection in your life, when you understand this may be a blessing in disguise, you're able to bounce back a lot better than you used to. So you won't find yourself in, in a deeper hole or as deep as a hole as you've previously been in once you go through the healing process. But the reason why it's such horrible advice to tell people you don't need to heal first is because, again, it's that lack of healing that blinds you. It's that lack of healing that typically leads you into the arms of the wrong person. I always say when you haven't healed, you are 99% likely to end up with the wrong individual. The majority of people right now are not in the right relationship. And a huge reason, if not the number one reason, is the lack of healing. So if you want to break the cycle, if you want to avoid getting played, if you want to empower yourself in a way that you now can see things clearly, walk in your true strength and energy, focus on healing. And again, check out the membership program because I have all that laid out for you. But let's keep this going. All right, so I actually been going longer than I expected with some of these points. So now... I got four more for you, but I'm going to run through them a lot quicker because I want to fit it all into this one video. I was going to make a second video, but I'm like, let me just fit this all into one video. So, all right, let's keep this going. The next type of woman who keeps getting played is the woman who doesn't take accountability. Let's make this simple. You cannot grow in life if you don't learn from your past. If you don't, if you're not, uh, if you're not willing to look yourself in the mirror and see how can I be better? What were my mistakes in this situation? And we have to understand this. Even in situations where that person does us wrong, there is something to learn about what we could have done better. See, I think the, the, the issue that many people have, and more specifically right now for this video, many women have is that once you were wronged, you become blind to what 
how you contributed or what you could have done differently because you're so focused on what they did to hurt you. And this is why healing is also important because, again, you become blind to the things you need to see and learn from because you're dwelling in the hurt. So if, for example, let's just say the guy cheats on you. And I know that's a sore spot. I'm not blaming you for being cheated on. But what I'm saying is this. Let's say he cheats on you. If all you focus on is the fact that he cheated, then you can't learn the underlying lessons that can help you avoid or at least increase your chances of avoiding this. For example, maybe the first lesson is, you know that joker wasn't good for you in the first place, all right? When you first met him, that first conversation, something told you he wasn't it. But as I mentioned earlier, you rationalized past your red, the red flags, you ignored your intuition, well, I'm gonna talk about it in a second, and you kept it going. That would be the lesson to learn. Does that mean it's your fault he cheated on you? No, but it does mean that, you know what? If I make a better decision going forward in that area, I can increase my chances of avoiding these types of unhealthy situations, all right? Uh, that's just one example. Uh, another example is sometimes in situations, let's go away from cheating. And again, of course, there's a lot more we can talk about with cheating, but let's go into a different direction. Let's just say, you guys have very unhealthy communication. But if you're not willing to take a step back and say, you know what? I didn't always express myself in a healthy manner. I didn't always consider his feelings when we had discussions. Then you won't be able to be equipped to now have better communication in your next relationship. So plain and simple, we have to not look at it as a well, why is it my fault or why am I being blamed? No, it's what can I learn? How can I be better? There's always something we can learn. Again, sometimes we are the offender who, made, who did something wrong. Sometimes they are. Either way, there's something we can take from it. Let's focus on that. All right, so now the next type of woman who's always getting played is the woman with no support system or an unhealthy support system. So let's start with no support system. Simply in, in the same way of being able to take accountability, having friends, family, whoever, who can hold you accountable, who can help you recognize uh, the issues or see maybe the blind spots that you miss. And maybe if it's not family or friends, it's a coach, it's a counselor, it's somebody who can give you that outside perception because a lot of times it's hard for us to process things properly when we're emotionally invested. That's why even you notice when they say, why is it that the people who give great advice struggle with taking their own advice, <laughs> right? Or in general, why do people, they can give it, but they struggle applying it to themselves? It's because once someone is emotionally involved, it makes it difficult to now think clearly, to do what's best. They get driven by their emotions. It's very easy to get caught up in that. So you need people, a support system that can pour into you healthy guidance. But that's why I said either no support system or an unhealthy support system. A lot of women are getting played listening to their friends listening to their mama, <laughs> listening to their aunts, listening to whoever, listening to, this is no shade to anyone, listening to the wrong people on social media, all right? And listen, I'm not here to say that I, I am the end all be all of relationship advice. I tell you, whatever you take in, my advice, someone else's, pray about it, process it. Really ask yourself, is this healthy? Is this truly applicable? Like you, you got to go deeper rather than just attaching yourself to anything that sounds good in the moment and is feeding your emotions in the moment, but isn't properly guiding you in a healthy way. All right. But because a lot of people are surrounded by other hurt individuals, other negative percep perceptions, it ends up twisting and turning them into di in directions that only cause more problems and set you up for bigger disaster. So you've got to be mindful of not just having a support system of some kind, which will be best, okay? Not, it's not that you can't do it alone, but it's best to have that, but make sure it's a healthy one. All right, so I'm going to make these last two kind of a combination together, all right? And so the last two types of women who are always getting played are the women who ignore their intuition 
and I'm going to pause there. Let me just run through this real quick, and I'll give you the second one. So ignoring your intuition, I kind of already touched on it earlier. Listen, I, I'm a firm believer that intuition is a blessing, all right? And what a woman should strive to do, and, and not that men don't have it, but we're focused on women right now. What a woman should strive to do is learn how to tap into it. Not just wait for the intuition to hit you over the head and say, this is wrong or you shouldn't be here. Learn how to go inward to understand what needs to happen here. It, you, you know, what, what you're sensing, what your spirit is sensing or is picking up on, you know, getting that, that inner truth that you need. Because the reality is that whether you call it intuition, gut instinct, Holy Spirit, however different people want to label it, it all points to an inner voice or it, it, something within us that knows what's right. And, and it's very rare. I've never come across it for a woman to say her intuition was wrong. Fear maybe guide women to make a bad decision or, or overanalyze a situation incorrectly and things of that nature. But it wasn't really intuition hitting them in that moment. And that's the thing. You want to learn how to separate the fear from the intuition so you're not following the wrong thing. And what will help you in that, one of the things, which is the knife type of woman who continues to get pray, played, and this will only apply to certain women who are believers, is the woman who does not seek God for guidance. All right? A lot of women, and, and, and I'm not judging when I say this, but a lot of women may pray to ask God for a man. There are then women who may pray and ask God, is this the man for me? But they don't ask God, what do you want me to do here? Should I be with him right now? How do I proceed with this situation? You know what I'm saying? And yes, even just asking, is he truly the one? But not in, and not seeking out the answers in different signs and things that you have to puzzle piece together. Going back to listening to your spirit, going within, hearing it in prayer. This is where you're going to get the best guidance. This is where, again, because listen, another moment that my, something's here in my spirit. You know, I said earlier about not being quick to take anyone's advice on the internet, right? The reality is that you don't know who's moving in what kind of spirit. You don't know who has genuine intentions to guide you in a great way or who's just trying to take advantage of you in the moment. You don't know who's trying to manipulate you. You don't know who really doesn't care, but it just sounds good on the surface. A lot of people are getting fooled and tricked in various aspects of life because they're focused on what, they're, what they can analyze rather than going within and listening to God about who this person is, what this is really about, and how you should move forward in that situation. So seeking God out and seeking guidance is where you will win more and you will avoid the nasty cycle of continuously getting played. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. The first uh, question to ask him is what are his sexual and emotional expectations and desires. So let's break this down. So one, I start.